It's time to talk about the birds and the bees. In this video, I'll show you how to find the best wife in Bannerlord for each faction with the timestamps below if you want to skip ahead. I'll also be showing you the super spicy secret tactic, which I never see anyone using, but I just want to explain how powerful it actually is. You see, instead of recruiting lords into your kingdom, it's actually cheaper to grow your own family. Also, family can't actually leave your kingdom, they're stuck there for life. So you're basically creating a clan of the most loyal followers you can get in the entire game. And it's actually possible to quadruple your clan size through exploiting marriage and kids repeatedly in Mountain Blade 2 Battle Lord. Let me show you how it's done. So you start out the game with you and your brother. You both marry. Now the younger the lady is, the higher the chance she has to spawn two children. To do this, you just need to wait in town with your brother, and obviously both wives as well, until they're with child. 30 days later, it will spawn, and it will have a 50-50 chance for it to be male or female. Now men can have as many children as they want, but most females will usually have an average of at least three children but you can literally get six children from one character if you're lucky. So you're going to do this repeatedly with yourself and your brother until they both have at least three kids each. Now a wife can die in childbirth, but you can just get a new wife who's younger and just repeat this process. And before I go on, all the children that we spawn here can be completely customized as they grow up. And then when they turn to the age of 18 and you can actually recruit them into your party, you can also customize all of their attributes and all of their perks, making this a super powerful strategy in creating the ultimate character build for all of your followers or family. But also, once they turn 18, they're going to start getting marriage proposals. You should never marry off a female since you'd actually lose them from your clan. So any female children you have, just leave them unmarried. But all of the marriage proposals you receive for the male characters in your clan, you're going to want to accept. Because whenever a man gets married, the wife comes to live in your clan and expands your ever-growing empire. So now you can see what our family tree is starting to look like. And then we're going to be doing the same thing with the next family generation. We're going to invite them all into our party again. We're going to sit in town until they all have children. And eventually your family and clan are going to grow to such a massive extent that you're going to be bigger than other kingdoms and clans just purely based on the size of your family. And each one of these people is going to be able to bring an army of 100 plus that they can go off and recruit themselves and then you can just summon them to the battle. And the armies that you can actually bring for really, really cheap is going to be so effective at destroying the whole of Caradia. So, Battle Brothers, like the video and let us begin the process today. Now in Mountain Blade Battle Lord, there are many wives to choose from, however, I will only select the best for my character. But if you want a list of incredible wives, I am going to make a quick guide at the end of this video. I will timestamp it below of every awesome wife for each faction, so you can choose the best one that has the best skills and also is the youngest age, so you can have the most amount of children. I have two different options for this playthrough, and it's going to be whichever one says yes first. So, if I look at the leader of Batania, Caladog, and we go down, he actually has a daughter named Corrine. She's actually only 21. She has a pretty awesome skill set with decent tactical ability. Now, she doesn't have a good steward skill or trade skill, which means she wouldn't be good staying in a town or running caravans, unlike our second option. But first, we need to speak to her, and she's literally in the city of Maranath right now. So let's go ahead and breach the walls. Where is she? Go to the keep. She's somewhere in here. You can smell it. Let's go to the Lord's Hall and discover her. Hello, hello, hello. Where is she? Oh, is this her? Corrine. This is her. This is her. Hello, hello. Agna. Agna. God. She looks terrifying. I like it. So what is it then? Would you care to pass the time with a game of Bakchal? I have no idea what that is. Is it like Twister? There is something I'd like to discuss. <laughs> Go on. My lady, I wish to profess myself your most ardent admirer. <laughs> yes, we're considering offers. Do you, do you have someone in mind? I'm, I'm talking about me. I, I have myself in mind. Perhaps you and I... <laughs> I'll have some devil. I'll give you that. <laughs> we meet from time to time, as is the custom, to see if we are right for each other. I hope to see you again soon. 
Wait, did you just end the conversation? That's it. Yeah. Is it this guy? Is it this guy, huh? Is he the competition? Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? How disgusting. How do you not know who I am? I am Ragnar. Mark it down. You should be hearing of me a lot when I conquer your empire. What is your relationship status with Corrine? Wait a second. You don't even know her. I am confused. <coughs> Ragnar. So, I'm glad to have a chance to spend time together. Yes, it's been good to have a chance to get to know each other. They, they say you've travelled quite widely. Tell me a bit about your journeys. Her face isn't even above the menu. Yeah, it's a rough world, but there are lots of opportunities to be seized right now if you're not afraid to get your hands a bit dirty. Yes, you might be correct. Between your followers and your rivals and your enemies, you must have met a lot of interesting people. Most people will put a knife in your back for a few coppers. Have a few friends and keep them close, I guess. Success, it was like 50-50. I see. Well, seems we have a fair bit in common. <laughs> Slightly concerned now, to be honest. Perhaps we can talk some more when we meet again. Knife in the back. This is Corrine right here. Hello there, Corrine. I don't think so. This is how you do it, Corrine. Get wrecked, son. Oh, oh, oh. Who's doing it? Let's go. Boom. Get wrecked, son. Oh, she's blocked me. Ah. I am the better warrior. So it's gone pretty well with Corrine Battle Brothers, but now we're on to our next suitor, who is Svana. And we actually slaughtered her and her family last episode, uh, last playthrough even. Here she is, Svana. She is 25, but she actually has 101 steward skill, which makes her really good at looking after any castles or kingdoms you have. And she also has 81 trades, so she can run her own caravan and actually make money. Obviously, her tactics are also great, and her combat skill is fantastic. So, she is just the all-round best marriage material. The best waifu in Bannalore. And she was seen here on the map in Glavastrom. So, we will track her scent. And we're just going to head straight to Svana because... There's a lot of things we need to get done for the main quest, and one of those things is actually having a heir to our kingdom. We do have family, but currently no bababis. So this is a very important thing we must do, my friends. So she's near this village. Oh, here she is. Oh my god, she's being chased by an army. That is a big army. Quick, we can save her life by marrying her. The ultimate simp move. She doesn't have a choice at this point. She's literally being chased down by a massive army. She will have no choice but to accept my offer. We must catch up with her. It's been now we did meet her in the previous live stream, which is linked in order in the playlist if you guys are wondering. So what is it then? Perhaps we should discuss a future together. Yes, I've been thinking about that. I insist that my husband conduct himself according to the highest standards. I am a man of my word. I hope that is sufficient. Let's go. A success. <laughs> I am happy to hear that. I am just not. How, how can I say this? I am not attracted to you. What? So what? This is supposed to be an alliance of our houses, not of the hearts. This is about houses. This is about your skill set. I am very offended because you don't look great yourself. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Okay. Yes, I, I think I would be honoured to accept your proposal. What? <laughs> it worked! Godun, as head of our family, needs to give his blessing. There are usually financial arrangements to be made. Wow, she literally didn't have a choice, did she? It says open up the encyclopedia. We've got to find Godun, who is her father, a lord of Sturgia. He's 52. Man's almost dead. He was last seen at this castle as a prisoner. Oh dear. Okay, so now we have to travel all the way back over here to this castle. Now, I'm actually intrigued. Can I ask this guy? He literally won't have a choice while he's in prison if I can marry his daughter. Do you, th do you think uh, that's going to work out for us? So on our journey over, it seems that Godan has now been freed because of a peace declarations with the Sturgeons. And he was last seen in Omor. Oh, there's actually a tournament going on here. Maybe we can battle him. And by beating him in battle, we will win his daughter's hand. To the arena! There are 13 lords! Holy moly! Given the turnout, the organisers are offering an early retirement. 
for the victor. What is that? It's a tier 6 weapon. Okay, we have to win this. And Gudun is actually in the tournament as well. Come on then, let's go. Ah. Rip his head off. Yes. I've already defeated one noble. Get wrecked, son. Finish him, finish him. There we go, get wrecked. Bet the maximum amount, show him that we mean business. Watch this. Oh god, that was an axe to the face that I just took there. Oh, okay, oh my god, only one hit. He went down so easily, I guess the other guy whipped him. There he is, look at him, what's he doing? Just throw an axe at me, brother? We'll see about that, won't we? Ha! Oh, right in his toe. Oh my god, in his face, what's this? Oh, oh my god. Literally, distance 1.1 meter. He absorbed that damage with his face. Okay, it's mono versus mono. Oh, come on then. Oh, get wrecked, some. Dude, get destroyed. Didn't stand a chance. Now chop off his head for a trophy. It's worth 22,000 gold. It is a one-handed or two-handed weapon. All right, with our victory, let's go to the keep and find Godun in the Lord's Hall. Look how many nobles are here. It'll be embarrassing if he says no. Maybe I can give him this tournament weapon uh, to show my victory. Dude, there's so many people here. Oh, is that? No, that's not him. Ah, oh, here he is. He's sitting down. It's been a while. It has indeed. Congratulations on your victory in that tournament. Let's go right to the point. I wish to discuss the final terms of my marriage with Svana. Very well then. Oh, okay. Trade offer. You give me 25,000, I marry your daughter. You can thank me later. Oh, we can't even offer this. You offer me nothing. I have to pay you. How much do I have to pay you? One dinar? I'm literally doing your favor at this point. So three dinars? Four? Five? Six? Okay, okay. Let's go crazy. 100 dinars. 500 dinars. 1,000 dinars dinars 2000 dinars oh my god he's instantly you see you start low you work your way up that's how they get you i'm actually going to lower this offer because i don't think she's let's not go crazy now i don't want to break the bank 1690 dinars wow i'll say that back 80 oh 87 there we go bang i marry your daughter <gasps> it worked it worked Look at me in my fancy ragged clothes. Amazing. On the 18th day of spring, 1087, Ragnar married Swan. Disgusting, I love it. Congratulations and may the heavens bless you. My friend. Oh my god, look at him, he's turned to Santa Claus. We now have a hundred relationship with him? He absolutely loves us now. Now I need to click on Svana, and it currently says that she's regrouping. Oh no, that's why she was so cheap and her dad wanted to get rid of her, because she'd been taken prisoner. He literally scammed us. I can't believe it. So anyway, we wait a week for our wife to escape from prison, and then finally we meet in Valadia, and prepare to double our clan size by generating children. So while we're mating, we're going to create a new party with Frostbeard and we're going to give him some of our troops. And we're also going to make another party with Sven. They can pay the wages and also make some money while we're busy. In the meantime, we're going to make the baby save. And in order to get a baby, you basically just need to wait with your wife in any town. So now we just need to sit here and wait. And these other parties will go off and eventually start making money at some point. Now the best way to check if your companion is pregnant is by finding her on the encyclopedia and it will come up just here if she's been made pregnant or on the, on the bottom left there. So each day you're waiting in a town to get your wife pregnant, you have a percentage based chance every single day you wait. I usually recommend waiting for like 10 to 15 days and if it doesn't happen just reload the previous save and then wait again and the chance of her getting pregnant decreases as she gets older. Now another thing we could do to make this method even faster is get our brother Sven who also has a wife and if we also make sure that they are both in our party as well as our wife we will both be mating at the same time which means we can potentially get another two children for the family. If you want to be super effective. Oh, Svana has gotten pregnant. Summer 18, 1087. Wow, I must be fertile AF. Okay, so now she's pregnant. We can literally wait around 32 days and then she should give birth. So at this point, we're now going to leave and we're going to go over here and catch up with Sven, who's apparently in this town 
just next door and get all of our troops back. As long as he doesn't leave into the distance. Should just be over here at the distance. Here he is. Got 73 men now. Look at him. Hello there, Sven. It's been a while. Let me inspect your troops. I'm going to take all of my troops back that I gave you. Thank you. So we go on the clan tab at the bottom here and then click on party and then Frostbeard's party. We can actually change the party leader now. So we're going to click on that. And Svana, even though she's pregnant, we're literally going to send her off. She can like get some skills and level ups and manage that party instead. So we're going to let her level up until she gives birth and then we'll do the same thing again and carry on getting loads of kids. And then Frostbeard is currently moving to our party now. Make sure you reset the different clan roles as well. Now Farrakh is still underage, but Athen has now become of age. So we can recall this member to our party as well. It's going to take her three days to get here. But if we go to our character tab, we can find her and you can see we actually have nine attribute points and five focus points to assign into her, which is incredible because she's such a young age. She's actually going to have loads of time to level up her skills. And also because we got to select her background, you can see her trade skill is already pretty damn good. So I'm going to put six into endurance for the riding skill. Seven into cunning for the scouting skill. I also put the focus points in there as well. And then seven into social for trade and later on leadership and charm are also useful. Now Aethleen is in our party. We're going to go to the nearest castle and we're going to speak to a caravan broker. Hey, I don't think I know you. I'm going to go ahead and hire a caravan from this town and Aethleen will manage it. One thing you should also know about Aethleen is that since she's now of age, she'll be getting marriage requests. You should reject all of these. If a female from your family gets married, they'll actually go to the other clan and you'll lose access to them. However, if Farrok, when he becomes of age and gets a marriage request, or even any other sons we have in the future, always make sure you accept the marriage request because then you'll actually get an extra companion to add into your family. And they can also have a child themselves and you can just grow your clan infinitely across the ages. At this point, we have one, two, three, four, five profitable caravans. And I've also built up some workshops in the background as well. So we're currently making about two thousand dinars a day minus expenses plus whatever we gather as we play the game at this point we can either build our own kingdom or we can join or we can join a faction like Valandia. but one thing is for sure i really want to have my own castle or town and there's a special method we can use to actually steal a castle from a faction before we become a vassal or open our own kingdom so next episode i'm going to be showing you how to steal a castle i'll link that below but now so now i'm going to be sharing with you the best wives in the game starting out with the kingdom of sturgia now you may be wondering why would it matter what background my wife is well it does kind of matter if you want to use her as a steward you're going to want to put her in command of a castle or city that has the same background as her culture so that they don't rebel against her so obviously we've already spoken about Svana and she is now my wife from this episode another great option however is Siga Siga is also a vassal of Sturgia albeit a bit older but as you can see her combat skills are insane she also has a very good steward skill great tactics as well and also good in charm next we have the kingdom of Batania and here we have Corrine age 22 and i obviously spoke about her at the start of the video she's great if you want her in combat for most of the time obviously you'd have to train up to be a steward or a caravan master so basically a less diverse wife now we have the kingdom of the azurai and we have arwa i think she's age 24 at the start of the game and as you can see she has a decent steward skill good in tactics and also has very good combat skills considering her age. She's also got good leadership and charm. Her father is also Adram and he is the leader of the Banu Saran clan. Next we have the Kingdom of the Kuzes and there's two choices here. Firstly we have Abigail and again she has fantastic combat skills, also decent in tactics a good charm and leadership as well. She's also only 25 I think at the start of the game and Tug 
and Talag is her father who is leader of the Arkit clan. Next we have in my opinion the best Kuzate wife choice. She has an age of 24 at the start of the game and her name is Yana. As you can see her skill set is one of the best in the entire game. She has a steward skill of 141, a tactics of 140 and a trade skill of 120. Also a leadership is 140 and charm is 60. Her combat skills are decent but mainly it's all those other useful skills that make her as one of the best sort of jack of all trade companions you can get. Next we have Valandia starting out with Sylvin who also has skills in trade, stewardship, tactics, leadership and charm. She starts off at around the age of 26 or 25 I believe and her mother is Calatild who is the leader of, of the Day Aramat clan of Valadia. The next option that is also in my opinion the best Valadian wife, she starts the game at level at age 26 and she has a trade of 122, a stewardship of 141, tactics are 160 so she's just again a jack of all trades and one of the best choices for a wife with a Valadian background. Now we're going on to the Southern Empire and here we have Ira. She has fantastic combat skills, tactics and leadership. She's also at age of 24 at the start of the game and the best part is she's actually the daughter of Regea who is the queen of the Southern Empire. A lot of people simp over her but you can't marry the leaders of a faction unless you mob the game. The best wife from the Western Empire is Nadia. As you can see she has a decent steward skill, trade skill and tactics and charm and all those good valuable combat skills as well. And her father is actually Garios and he is the leader of the... And next we have one of the best wives in the Northern Empire which is Epiphyria or something like that. Her... She starts off at age 24 and she has decent skills and they're not the best. She obviously is good in stewardship, pretty good in combat and also in charm as well. So it makes a pretty good person to put in charge of a town. Now before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support you guys have had on this Banner Law playthrough. As you can see, the views aren't doing that well compared to like my Skyrim or Fallout content and content that I'd usually produce on the channel. But I just want to say it's awesome to see all the comment section and how positive you guys are. It really makes me feel good about making this content and I'm having fun playing the game as well. And I want to say thanks as well to all of those who have become Patreons and also members of the channel because that really does help, you know, build up the difference in revenue that we're getting from these videos. It's super low. So, you know, because of that, I just want to continue this playthrough because I see everyone enjoying it. So I'm going to do some more live streams as well because you guys love that. I'll see you in the next one of those. Goodbye.